Shabbat Shalom, Havarim. Maybe you'll remember from prior weeks that Havarim means friends in Hebrew. And I hope that you're having a very beautiful Sabbath day. Did you ever make a promise to somebody? And if you did, did you keep your promise? Did you promise your little brother that he could use your toy car? Maybe you promised mom that you do your schoolwork as soon as you finished your baseball game with the neighbors. Maybe you promised dad that you do the dishes after dinner. If you kept your promise, how did that make you feel? And if you broke your promise, how did that make you feel? You know, there was a time in history that you didn't have to say fancy things like, hey, I, I pinky promise, or I really, really, really will do this, or any fancy words, because you just stating that you would do something was good enough. Your neighbors and townspeople would expect you to keep your word. And if you didn't keep your word, I'm sure that your reputation around town would be destroyed. Do you know what reputation means? It means the way other people think about you. And that used to mean a lot to people. Sadly, people are getting further and further away from Yahweh nowadays. And we need more and more things like contracts, which is written pieces of paper with signatures and lawyers to enforce those contracts. Because a person's word today is not good enough. But the good news is there's somebody still out there whose word always is true and is good enough. And today, we're going to learn about some of the promises that Yahweh made to Abram. Heavenly Father, thank you for this beautiful day that you've made. Thank you for Shabbat, a special time of rest that you have set apart for your children. And we thank you for everyone here uh, from around the world that are watching and learning of your ways and of your Torah and how we should walk in it. We thank you again and we pray that you bless us, keep us all safe in your care. May we all be well in mind, body, and spirit. And we just love you so much and thank you. Pray this in Yeshua's precious name. Amen. Shabbat Shalom. This is another new song called The Promise. And it's about Abraham, the father of our faith, and the promise that Yah made to him. And here it goes.
promises true. We believe in you like our father Abraham. We trusted that you as you said you would do. For you are our great reward. Oh, 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 oh. Your promises true. We believe in you like our father Hi, this is Susie. Today, we're going to visit one of my favorite parts of scripture, when Yahuwah makes a promise to Abraham. I love this part of the word because Yahuwah never broke or breaks his promise. Abraham was also incredibly faithful. In fact, his belief was counted as something. See if you can find out what that something was. Some time later, the word of Yahuwah came to Abram in a vision. Don't be afraid, Abram. I am your protector. Your reward will be very great. <sighs> Abram replied, Yahuwah Elohim. What good will your gifts be to me if I continue childless, and Eliezer from Demesek inherits my possessions? You haven't given me a child, so someone born in my house will be my heir. <laughs> but the word of Yahuwah came to him. This man will not be your heir. No, your heir will be a child from your own body. Then Yahuwah brought Abraham outside and said, Look up at the sky and count the stars. If you can count them, your descendants will be that many. Abraham believed Yahuwah, and he credited it to him as righteousness. Then he said to him, I am Yahuwah who brought you out from Ur Kazdim to give you this land as your possession. Abraham replied, Yahuwah Elohim, how am I to know that I will possess it? Yahuwah answered him, Bring me a three-year-old cow, a three-year-old female goat, a three-year-old ram, a dove, and a young pigeon. Abraham brought him all these, cut the animals in two, and placed the pieces opposite each other. But he didn't cut the birds in half. Birds of prey swooped down on the carcasses, but Abraham drove them away. As the sun was about to set, a deep sleep fell on Abraham. Horror and great darkness came over him. Yahuwah said to Abraham, Know this for certain. Your descendants will be foreigners in a land that is not theirs. They will be slaves and held in oppression there four hundred years. But I will also judge that nation, the one that makes them slaves. Afterwards, they will leave with many possessions. As for you, you will join your ancestors in peace and be buried in a good old age. Only in the fourth generation will your descendants come back here, because only then will the Amori be right for punishment.
After the sun had set and there was thick darkness, a smoking fire pot and a flaming torch appeared, which passed between these animal parts. That day, Yahuwah made a covenant with Abraham. To your descendants I have given this land, from the river of Egypt to the great river, the river Euphrates, the Kenites, the Kenizzites, the Cadmonites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Rephaim, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Girgashites, and the Chibnesses. This is Miss Ashley. Shalom. Today in our lesson, it talks about how Yah told Abram to count the stars if he is able. Yah told Abram his descendants, meaning his children, grandchildren, great grandchildren, great 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 grandchildren, etc., would be more than the stars. So we are going to look at information about stars today. In 1 Corinthians 15:41, it explains how each star differs in glory. We can tell they differ in brightness. Did you know stars differ in color from red to blue? The colder stars are red. Their temperature ranges from 3,000 to 40,000 Kelvin. Hotter stars are orange, yellow, white, and the hottest is blue. To understand Kelvin temperature measurement, Know that water freezes at 273.15 Kelvin and water boils at 373.15 Kelvin. So the stars are much hotter than that, even the colder ones. A star's brightness varies by temperature and size of the star. Most of the stars are faint, so we don't see them just from looking up at the sky with our naked eyes. We only see the extremely bright ones. The properties of stars show that they were made supernaturally by Yah. Stars are made mainly from hydrogen and helium gas. They also have a small amount of metals in them. We have never seen new stars forming, so we know that they were all created at the beginning by Yah. Stars show that creation was recent and didn't happen billions of years ago. Blue stars are bright and expend their fuel more quickly than the other stars. Therefore, blue stars can't shine very long. So this shows that stars have not been around for the billions of years that some people think. Well, that is our new information that we learned about stars today. I hope you learned something new and have a blessed Shabbat. Shalom, friends. So Yahweh said to Abram, Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your very great reward. He calls himself a shield. You know, in other parts of scripture, he says he'll be our shield as well. The maker of heaven and earth, the creator of all things, is a shield for us. And that's his word. And as we said before, his word is always true because he's sinless and blameless and perfect. He makes a lot of promises to us in scripture. And in the coming weeks in Trained Up in Torah, we will be learning about those promises. But now I would like to read just a few pieces of scripture where he makes promises to us. Deuteronomy 31.8 is the first scripture, and it says, And it is Yahweh who is going before you. He himself is with you. He does not fail you nor forsake you. Do not fear nor be discouraged. Now let's go to Isaiah 54.10. Isaiah 54.10 says, for though the mountains be removed and the hills be shaken, 
my loving commitment is not removed from you, nor is my covenant of peace shaken, says Yahweh, who has compassion on you. Isaiah 40, 29 says, He gives power to the faint and to those who have no might. He increases strength. John 3, 16. For Elohim so loved the world that he gave his only brought forth son so that whoever believes in him shall not perish but possess eternal life. Those are some great promises. He makes Abram some great promises too. Promises him a son in his old age. He promises the land that he will possess. And he makes a covenant with him. Do you know what a covenant is? A covenant is actually stronger than a promise. It's a binding agreement. And it cannot be broken unless the covenant itself states that. Now, sometimes Yahweh makes a covenant and he says words like, if you do these things, like if you obey me, then I will give you this or I will do this. Um, so sometimes we have to do certain things in order to get the promises. But you know, the promises that were made to Abram were also made to us because we were, we are his descendants. Whether we were adopted in, grafted in, or actually of Israel. Those are all of our promises as well. Isn't that wonderful? We have all the wonderful blessings that Abram was given because Abram had that very special relationship with Yahweh and he loved him very much. Now, let's go learn some Hebrew and listen to a story and learn some history. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Today for Hebrew, we're going to do something a little bit different than we normally do. Miss Joanna has been teaching us so much these past few weeks, and so today we're going to do a little bit of a review. So I'm going to show you some segments from past weeks, some words that you've already learned, just to get a refresher and, you know, make sure we got them fresh in our brains. And then we'll have a little bit of a game where I ask you some questions, and you either tell me the English or the Hebrew word for whatever the answer is. So I also want to do a special thank you to Miss Joanna. She has done so much these past few weeks helping us out on Hebrew and taught us so much. And it's with a really sad heart that I have to let y'all know that Miss Joanna is um, not going to be with us on Trained Up and Tour anymore. She's had some things come up in her life that's made it where she won't be here anymore unless Yahweh makes a way, which I hope Yahweh will make a way because I know I really enjoy Miss Joanna. And so I just wanted to let y'all know uh, in case y'all really enjoy Miss Joanna too, because I'm sure you do where she is because that's why she's not going to be here with us. And so I want to tell you, Miss Joanna, if you're watching, we really, really love you and we're really going to miss you. And we've really appreciated all that you've done uh, to help all these past lessons on Trained Up in Torah. And just know that you are always welcome to come back. And I'm sure everybody watching loves you and will miss you as well. So everybody, let's jump in and get a review with Miss Joanna. Shalom, Mishpacha. 
This is your Havara Yohana, or Miss Joanna. I'm here with Bryn to present this week's Hebrew language lesson. Today we're going to learn how to say the names of the days of the week in Hebrew. Now on to learning the Yemai HaShavua, or the days of the week in Hebrew. In Hebrew, the word used for day when speaking about the days of the week is Yom. Y-O-M. Yom. When saying each of the names of the days of the week in Hebrew, first we say Yom, and then we add the number of that specific day. So, beginning with day one or first day, because that's the best place to start, we would say Yom Rishon. Yom Rishon. Now you repeat after me. Yom Rishon. Day two or second day in Hebrew is Yom Shani. Yom Shani. Now you try. Yom Shani. Day three or third day is Yom Slishi in Hebrew. Yom Slishi. Okay, it's your turn. You say Yom Slishi. We come to the last day of the week, the seventh day, the weekly moed or appointed time. The day Abba commanded us to remember, observe, set apart, and rest from all of our work just as he rested after his six days of creating the heavens and the earth and all that are contained therein. This is Shabbat. Sometimes this day is also called Yom Shabbat or day of rest or rest day. Okay, it's game time. So I'm going to ask you a question. What day of the week are we not supposed to work? And are we only supposed to rest? Is it A, Yom Shlishi? Is it B, Yom Shini? Is it C, Yom Shabbat? Or D, Yom Rishon? That's right. It's Yom Shabbat. Great job. There are different purposes for different chayot or animals. Some are tahor, clean, and some are tameh, unclean but all are tov, or good, for the purposes which Yahweh intended. Land animals that are clean to eat are said to chew the cud and have split hooves. Cud is a portion of vegetation that is chewed and swallowed, then brought back up to be chewed again to break down all of the nutrients from the food. A hoof is a sheath of horn which covers the toes or a portion of the feet of certain animals. Perot, or cows, have split hooves and chew the cud, so they are tahor, clean. Susim, or horses, don't chew the cud, and their hooves are smooth, so they are tameh, or unclean. Hazarim, or pigs, have split hooves, but they do not chew cud, so they are also tameh, or unclean. Okay, so now I'm very interested, and I just have to ask, what are your favorite type of chayot or animals? Oh, I really like those too. In many polls, that means votes, the most popular animal in the world is the kelev, or dog, and the second most popular animal is the chatul, or cat. Okay, here's our next questions. I'm going to show you a picture, and you tell me whether it's a kalev or a katu. Ready? Let's go. Is this a kalev or a katu? That's right. It's a katu. Kalev or katu? Great job. It's a kalev. Is this a kalev or a katu? Isn't he a cute Kalev? Is this a Kalev or a Katu? Great job. It's a Katu. Can you tell me which one this is? Great job. It's a Kalev. What about this one? Do you remember? Great job. It's a Katu. All right. Here's our last one. Which one is it? Do you remember? 
Great job. It's a collab. Wow, you did such a great job. All right, let's get going learning some more. Let's learn the name of some farm animals. I'll say the name of an animal, and then I'll repeat it, and then you'll have time to say the name. Okay, let's begin. In Hebrew, the word for horse is sus, sus. In Hebrew, the word for cow is para, para. In Hebrew, donkey is pronounced chamor, chamor. Sheep is pronounced kifsa, kifsa in Hebrew. In Hebrew, the word for goat is ez, ez. The Hebrew word for chicken is tarnagolet, tarnagolet. In Hebrew, the word for duck is barvaz, barvaz. Okay, let's work on some more questions. If I'm going to have tarnagola and noodle soup, what kind of soup am I going to have? That's right, chicken noodle soup. Great job. Is this a para or a sous? Great job. It's a para. Okay, is this a sous or a chamor? Great job. It's a chamor. Aw, ain't he cute? Is this a kivsa or is it a chazir? Great job. It's a chazir. You are doing awesome. Is this a sous? Or is this a is? You're doing awesome. That was a sus. The Hebrew word for rainbow is keshet. Keshet. Yahweh said the keshet, or rainbow, is the sign of a covenant which he made between himself and all the earth, with Noah and all the chayot, or animals, that he would never again send a mabul, or flood, to destroy the whole earth. Every time we see a cheshet or rainbow, we are reminded that Yahweh has kept his promise not to send another mabul or flood upon the whole earth. The cheshet or rainbow reminds us that Yahweh keeps all of his promises to his people. Now that we've learned that the cheshet or rainbow is a sign of the covenant that Yahweh made and how Yahweh always keeps his promises, Let's learn how to say the names of the colors of the keshet or rainbow in Hebrew. As always, I'll say the Hebrew word, and then I'll repeat it, and then you'll have time to say it after me. Okay, let's begin. The Hebrew word for color is zeva, zeva. The Hebrew word for colors is zvaim, zvaim. The word for orange is katom. Katom. In Hebrew, the word for yellow is zahov, zahov. In Hebrew, the word for green is yarok, yarok. The word for blue in Hebrew is kahol, kahol. What is your favorite zeva or color? Oh, all of those are such beautiful zvaim. What zva is a lemon? Is it kahol or is it sahov? That's right, sahov. Great job. What zva is a lime? Is it katom or yarok? That's right, it's yarok. You're doing awesome. What zva is an orange? Is it katom or zahov? That's right, it's katom. Great job. What zva is the sky and water? Is it yarok or is it kahol? That's right, it's kahol. You did fantastic. Thank you so much for playing with me today. 
I had a lot of fun and I hope you did too. You've done a fantastic job. Keep using those words and we'll see you next week. Shalom. Until next time, my Dodi Havarim. Shalom B'Shem Yeshua HaMashiach, or peace to you in the name of Yeshua Messiah. History. What is an heir? In the Bible, having an heir is very important. It allows families to pass on property or something of value after a person's death. The birthright, biblically speaking, goes to the oldest son. He will be the head of the household and receive double portion of the inheritance. An example would be if you had four sons, you would split your inheritance five ways and the oldest son would get two portions. Some examples in the Bible where we see an heir is in the blessing of Abraham to Isaac. Isaac received the promises given to his father by Yah. Also, we see Isaac give the firstborn blessing to Jacob instead of the older brother Esau. So not having an heir is a big deal because the family name ends and thousands of years of lineage ends as well. Every person alive today is a result of continued lineage. We can all trace our lineage back to Noah and Adam. What's up for the life? Shalom! Hi there! This is Susie, and today I have two very special guests with me. I'm Libby. I'm Clemmy. What is a promise? A promise means keeping your word. What does keeping your word mean? Well, listen, and I'll tell you right now. When you say you'll be home and you're not home when you said, when you tell your mum you'll tidy your room and you chuck everything under the bed, Or you tell your little brother that you'll wait for him outside. And you run off with your friends to get away from him and hide. Is that what you you call a promise? No way! A promise means doing exactly as you say. So let's make sure that we mean what we say and everyone will know that they can depend on you. So let your yes be yes and your no be no. Anything else surely just won't go. So have a careful think before you promise because remember you must do exactly as you say. So let's be sure that we mean what we say. Have a happy, happy, happy day. Well, I think we defined what a promise was really well. Thanks for your help, Clemmy. You're welcome. Thanks for your help, Libby. Anytime. A set of promises make up a covenant, and a covenant is between two parties. It's an agreement of the likes. The best example we have of this in our society is that of a marriage. When two people make vows and have outward signs to show inward commitment. Sadly, in our culture, it's very hard to grasp the depth of a covenant when so many marriages end. But praise Yahuwah, He is our best example of steadfastness and commitment. His words never return void. He cannot lie. He is faithful and He does not change. Let's try and imitate that as his sons and daughters. Shalom. We learned so much today. I hope that you are encouraged. I hope that you would want to lean a little bit more on Yahweh, knowing that he keeps his promises and his word is true. And I hope that you will be more encouraged to keep your promises and your word. Because we try to be more like our Father in Heaven. We want to do what He says to do. 
and we want to follow in his footsteps. Now please gather up your craft materials because we're going to get ready to do a craft. We're also going to learn a memory verse and sing a song and pray. Hey kids, I'm Ashley. I'm Joey. I'm Sephardou. I'm Ariel. This is Eliab. Say hey Eliab. You wait. <laughs> and today we're going to be doing a really fun song to go with this week's Sabbath school lesson and you get to dance along with it. So get up and get ready to dance and let's have a lot of fun. You ready? Father Abraham and many sons and many sons have Father Abraham. I am one of them and so are you. So let's all praise Yahweh right here. Father Abraham and many sons. And many sons had Father Abraham. I am one of them, and so are you. So let's all praise Yahweh, right hand, left hand, Father Abraham. And many sons, and many sons had Father Abraham. I am one of them, and so are you. So let's all praise Yahweh, right hand, left hand, right foot, Father Abraham. And many sons, and many sons had Father Abraham. I am one of them, and so are you. So let's all praise Yahweh, right hand, left hand, right foot, left foot, turn around. Yay! Good job! Shabbat Shalom! Shabbat Shalom! Shabbat Shalom, everyone. I hope you all had a wonderful week and are having a restful Sabbath. This week we have talked about Yahweh's promise to Abram. Our memory verse comes from Bereshith 15.5. It says, And he brought him outside and said, Look now toward the heavens and count the stars if you are able to count them. And he said to him, So are your seed. Have you ever tried to count the stars? It sounds impossible because there are so many. Just like the amount of stars, so are the amount of Abram's offspring, or children. Instead of having disbelief, Abram believed Yahweh and his promise of a future seed, a number comparable to the stars in the sky. Yahweh knew Abram was righteous because of his belief. We too can gain Yahweh's abundant promises by believing him and following his word. Once again, our memory verse is Bereshith 15, 5. And he brought him outside and said, Look now toward the heavens, and count the stars if you are able to count them. And he said to him, So are your seed. Hey everybody, it's time for our craft. And before we get into our craft, I just wanna say a little thing and let y'all know what we're gonna be doing. So in this chapter, we learned that Abraham's descendants are gonna be as numerous as the stars in the heavens. And so for our craft today, we're going to make stars. Now, I just wanna say for any families who might have a problem with stars, we are not promoting any specific star, any specific shape. And if this is a problem with your family, just feel free, skip ahead, skip this craft. We're not trying to promote anything in particular. It's just having fun making, making stars. And we know stars are not shaped like stars, but Yahweh does still use a star shape in his creation, say like with snowflakes. They are shaped like a six-pointed star. And so Yahweh does use star shapes with leaves and different things. So we're just having a little fun making our own little stars to represent Abraham's descendants being as numerous as the stars. I hope you enjoy. everyone so for today's craft you're gonna need some either cardboard or cardstock some stiffer material you're gonna need a pencil or a pen um, some scissors something to draw a circle with so that can be anything however big you want your star to be and then different colored yarn I'm gonna just be using yellow but you can use a variety of different colors so to start out, I'm going to trace my circles and then I am going to cut them out.
And now that I have my circles, I am going to evenly, or sort of evenly, mark out different spots around my circle. And now you can do as many or as little as you want, and each number will give you a different design. And then with my scissors, I'm just going to cut those out. And now you're going to need your yarn, so just go ahead and cut out a good amount. Um, and more will be better because you can always shorten it at the end. And what you're going to do is you are going to secure it through one of those holes and you are going to wrap it around however you'd like, really. And then when you're done, you can either just tie a knot right here and it'll hang like that. Or if you don't feel like that's tight enough and secure enough, you could also have an adult help you poke a little hole in one of the spots and you can just thread a piece of yarn through there. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's craft and I'll see you on the next one. Shabbat shalom everyone. For this week's snack idea, I was inspired by us learning this week about how Abram had this great darkness come over him where he was frightened and Yahweh told him about what was going to happen later with his seed and how they were going to have to go into a land that wasn't their own and have to serve them and be afflicted for 400 years. But it ends on a good note promising that his seed is going to come out and come back to the land that he's promised Abram and he lets Abram know that he is going to live a happy long life and so that's good. So. This inspired me to let's do some healthy homemade chocolate and fill it with healthy seeds and nuts. And this is some good stuff. It gives you good energy. You can feel good eating it all the time, even for breakfast. Just make sure your mom and dad don't mind. Chocolate's super easy. You just melt whatever fat you're gonna use. That can be coconut, palm shortening, or butter. And a combination is best. You need to have at least coconut or palm shortening so it'll harden up when you refrigerate it. Cocoa organic is best if you can, and then your sweetener. And that can be honey, maple syrup, or stevia, or even something like erythritol or xylitol. And you mix all that up after you've melted your fat, pour it into a pie pan or a cake pan, and then put in any of your favorite nuts, sunflower seeds, flax seeds, almonds, pecans, whatever you wanna put in there, put it in there, even some dried fruit if you wanted to. Just sprinkle it on top, don't mix it. Then take your pie pan or your cake pan, stick it in the fridge or the freezer and let it harden up. And there you go, you have a healthy chocolate. Hey, what's up kiddos? Wasn't that a great Sabbath school? I think we need to spend some time telling Yahweh thank you. Thank you for not only a great Sabbath school, but also for all the people that put so much hard work into making this possible. Let's go to him and pray right now. Dear Yahweh, we thank you and bless you for all that you do for us, Father. We're grateful for the Sabbath school and the opportunity it is to be able to get together. Even though we're we're not together, we are together, Father. And it's such a blessing, Father. And we appreciate you for it. We appreciate you for making it happen. And we also appreciate you for uh, putting it in the hearts of all the people that help make this thing possible to actually do it, Father. We thank you so much for them. We pray that you would bless them for their efforts, Father. And we pray that you continue to strengthen them. Strengthen them on the inside. Strengthen them in their creativity, strengthen them in their their efforts in order to get this done and just let them know just how much of a blessing this is, Father. We pray, Father, as we go throughout our week that you would keep us safe, help us to have a wonderful week, Father, and get back here next week with you, Father, where we can keep Sabbath with you and just have another great Sabbath school. We thank you for all that you do for us. We ask this all in Yahshua's name. Hallelujah. See ya.